Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. This video today is very important. I'm gonna be getting more in depth in it as the days progress. We have some good people that do a lot of investigative work for us. Breaking news, Boeing's new CEO, Robert Ortberg, stepped down from Collins Aerospace in 2021. Why? QA expert Daryl Guberman explains. It appears to me after evaluation, here he is, he happened to come in. Mr. Bob, I'm so glad you popped in here. The new CEO, he's a former Collins Aerospace uh, CEO, and uh, during his time on board was the design, development, and implementation of the MCAS system, uh, the failure of the Ethiopian Air and Indonesian air aircraft, killing almost uh, 350 people. And uh, the thing that is very surprising is that he uh, stepped down in 2021 when things really started to heat up about the inquisition that uh, the subcommittee was doing with Dennis Mullenberg. I was, uh, I was uh, at the meeting in Washington concerning the whistleblower. Uh, we've got uh, documentation that, uh, that, that, there we go, I apologize. We have documentation that uh, really uh, actually corroborates what Sam Salapor is saying about the 777-787 Boeing uh, design issues. And what's even worse is that Boeing allowed their suppliers through an AS9100 certificate, as long as it's accredited by ANSI ANAP in 2002, to just send in your certificate, send in your parts, we don't have to come visit you. Um, <clears throat> these are the three federal agencies that sit, and there's more, but these are the three topical and major um, federal agencies that are looking into Boeing. You have Boeing sitting there too, of course, with David Calhoun uh, on this side of the world. And uh, you have the DHS, DOJ, and you also have the FAA. They also pay um, a fee into um, ANSI ANEP for uh, services rendered, so to speak. And I find it absolutely deplorable, don't you, ladies and gentlemen, that you have federal agencies that are paying a fee and also paying a fee to services rendered by ANSI ANEP. On top of it, they pay a fee to be a member on the accreditation body that Boeing... <laughs> That Boeing forces down their manufacturers' throats and suppliers. Let me just tell you in brief. 2002 in April, uh, the uh, Boeing formed an alliance with the Performance Review Institute, which is for NADCAP, special processes, heat treat, welding, etc. Uh, seven months prior to that was 9-11, and they were supposed to be making 500 plus ships that year. Instead, they felt that it was going to be cut back to 400 and that they were going to have to lay off 20 to 30,000 employees. So you have the factor that April, seven months later, they came out with the Performance Review Institute for NADCAP special processes. Just a couple months later in July, they came out with a supplier bulletin that stated that if you are ANSI ANAP accredited, as long as it's AS9100, send in your cert, send in your parts, we don't have to come visit you. That was also the case with the special processes. Uh, Boeing sits on ANSI ANAP's board that grants, suspends, and withdraws certification. Uh, they also mandate it on their supplier portal, okay? And also, of course, on that supplier bulletin. Let's go through this. You have the American National Standards Institute, which is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental corporation that has federal agencies and corporations on board. You have the factor that ANSI took over complete control over ANAB in 2018, and during 2015 to 2021, they were controlled and manipulated by communist China because, because China was handed over leadership of the International Accreditation Forum, which was founded by ANSI, that's the founding uh, father of the IAF, along with the affiliate uh, ANAP. They are underwriters for the IAF, which means they take all legal responsibilities for both systematic and also uh, product failures. You've got that, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, their sister organization, they're also involved with, uh, IF, uh, IF has his sister organization, which is ILAC, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. This shows you, without a doubt, I'm not lying, that ANSI is the founder of the IF with, with ANAP being its affiliate owner of the IF, and they are both, again, they are the uh, <laughs> they are the underwriters for IAF and ILAC. There you go. 
Here's a candid picture of Mr. Dennis Mullenberg from uh, October 30th, 2019, when he was being inquisitioned by the subcommittee. And during this time, Mr. Um, Ortberg was on board the company who manufactured the MCAS system. So 2020 came along, 2021, somebody must have advised him or he thought, man, the heat is getting hot in the kitchen, I gotta get out of there. And I don't think he was ever inquisitioned by the subcommittee, he was for free man. Well, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, and business owners, what I'm going to do for you today is you shouldn't fly on these things unless they get Daryl Guberman in to help him out in quality. Because right now, they put this gentleman in there who was, who during his tenure at Collins Aerospace System, the, the MCAS system was manufactured and tossed onto the plane, Boeing. I was there at this uh, subcommittee meeting with David Calhoun on June 18th, and this is Robert Kelly's future. If he does not get Daryl Guberman on board, I'm telling you as a fact, because when I read you this short little blurb, concerning the mess at Collins Aerospace Systems, you will ultimately find out why. Why Mr. Oberg stepped down in 2021. And here is his future. You notice it looks the same. David Calhoun and Dennis Mullenberg, look at the people behind them. Also, his organization sat on ANSI ANAB's board during this time, of course, uh, when China had complete control over the IAF, and that gentleman was also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services that certified the suspect lab, not suspect, but the lab that released the COVID virus. He actually gave a certificate to an ill-prepared laboratory. You've heard me say about that a, a lot. Also, Mr. Oberg was the president of the Aerospace Industries Association. Isn't that a tender moment? And I'm going to show you this real quick. In 2009, this is what it says. I'm only gonna read you one line of this. In 2009, the FAA increased the authority of Boeing's commercial airplanes division to self-certify its own aircraft. 2019, ladies and gentlemen, here it goes. An FAA spokesperson said, the FAA has never allowed companies to police themselves or self-certify. 2009, the FAA increased the authority of Boeing's commercial airplanes division and self-certify its own aircraft. And here it goes, ladies and gentlemen, business owners. Collins Aerospace, a subsidiary of United Technologies Corporation, UTC, was the manufacturer of the MCAS Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, used by the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft, and Robert Kelly Oatberg, also known as Bob Oatberg, was the CEO of Rockwell Collins, which later merged with UTC Aerospace Systems to form Collins Aerospace Systems from 2013 to 2018. During his tenure, the company was involved in the development and production of the MCAS system, referenced Ethiopian Air and Indonesian Air. Robert Kelly Oatberg was a CEO of Rockwell Collins from 2013 to 18. Collins Aerospace was formed in 2018 through the merger of Rockwell Collins and UTC Aerospace. The development and implementation of the MCAS system occurred between 2012 and 2017, during which time Oatberg was CEO of Rockwell Collins. Collins Aerospace System Timeline. 2012 MCAS system development began. 2013 Robert Kelly Oatberg became CEO of Rockwell Collins. 2017 MCAS system implementation completed. 2018 Rockwell Collins merged with UTC Aerospace Systems to form Collins Aerospace Systems with Oatberg as CEO until 2018. Oakberg was a CEO during the majority of the MCAS system's development and implementation phase from 2013 to 2017. And now you have a gentleman who does not know quality. He doesn't. They put a system on a plane that probably wasn't proven, and it failed on the Ethiopian Air and Indonesian Air. My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, T-Q-R-S, at yahoo.com. I think he was embarrassed and he took off. <laughs> it happened. Oh, there he is. Thank you, Robert, for coming. I'm sorry to embarrass you like this, but it's very disgusting. If you don't call upon Daryl Guberman to assist you, that black eye with the MCAS system will and can and shall haunt you. I thank you.